sir. It is a great honor for all of us in Ministry of Railways that you have been kind enough to spare time and consented to meet the probationers of Indian Railways. Indian Railways is one of the largest rail networks of the world. It ranks first amongst the rail passenger carriers and is the fourth largest rail freight carrier in the world. It integrates the vast and diverse country by connecting communities and linking industries to market. Indian Railways has a dedicated workforce of 1.3 million employees. This is managed by a cadre of around 10,000 Group A offices. Most of these offices are recruited through one of the 10 railway services through UPSC. Today we have probationers from services dealing with accounts, personal, traffic, stores, security and engineering departments. Sir, I am very honoured and humbled to stand before this August gathering and share our training experiences with you. All of us here can say with immense pride that we have joined an organisation with a mighty history, aptly termed lifeline to the nation, touching the lives of millions of people every day and thus playing a key role in national integration. As Indian Railway probationers who are being trained to manage this mammoth organisation, having a huge customer base and employing millions of people, we acknowledge the tremendous responsibility all of us are going to face in our jobs. Sir, this period in our lives, apart from giving us valuable knowledge, helped us grow in other ways too, especially by inculcating a close bond of camaraderie amongst colleagues. We also learned of the numerous challenges in front of Indian Railways during our probation. We are eager to prove our mettle by converting these challenges into opportunities and serve our country to the best of our abilities. Sir, on behalf of all the railway probationers present here, I would like to sit. thank you sincerely for meeting us, inspiring us and listening to our training experiences. We shall cherish this throughout our lives. Thank you, sir. I welcome you, all of you, to this historic Darbar Hall of Rashtrapati Bhavan. When you entered into this Darbar Hall, the magnificent columns, the centeliers, high dome, surely create a feeling amidst your mind and to my mind it always reminds me that these walls, these columns, this high dome has witnessed the transformation of India from 1931 till today. Coming to the development of Indian Railways, you have surely, after 78 weeks of rigorous trainings in the various institutions of different services which you represent and which run the one of the largest railway systems in the world. Just now, your chairman told us that 1.6 million employees, perhaps the largest employees which this 162 years old organization having. And I congratulate the railways, Indian Railways for its performance, that now it has become the most prestigious exclusive club of world, having the capacity of carrying freight more than one billion 
1 billion ton plus. Every day you are running large number of trains. I am told 25 million passengers are carried every day. It's not a mean task. Over 162 years, all this development did not take place suddenly or by any diktat because railways began its journey. After British power consolidated itself, there is long history, I am not going into that. But it would be precise to point out that after the transfer of power from British East India Company was transferred to British sovereign after the first Indian soldiers revolt against the British imperial power in 1857. 1858, the power was transferred. British government thought that such a vast country cannot be left to be administered by a mercantile company. In the language of Rabindranath Tagore, who held a scale, ultimately the scale was converted into the scepter. So it was decided that the power should be taken away by the British sovereign and administered through the Secretary of State, a member of the British cabinet accountable to His Majesty through Prime Minister. Since then, the modern administration in India began and railways also had its share. Various laws were passed which are the characteristics of the modern administration from the feudal administration with which we are accustomed for more than a century under the East India Company and prior to that, of course, 300 years of the Mughal rule and so on and so forth from the beginning.